Oh, g'day scrappers. Beautiful day today, and I'm catching up on uh, a lot of stuff to scrap out. So I've been scrapping out some PCs this morning, and uh, I come up to these two here, and I thought I'd give you a little look at scrapping these old Windows 98 systems. Um, these are just not, not good enough for my own collection, so I thought... Uh, yeah, just uh, do a couple on video as well as a few other things like I've got a Blu-ray player and I've got a giant uh, TV monitor. So it's it's more like a, a monitor rather than a television, but it's a bit of both. Uh, it's also a big touch screen, so it's, uh, I thought I'd scrap one of them out. And uh, yeah, we'll just uh, have a look at what I can get up to for the rest of the day. Okay, so I thought I might do this... Uh, gateway first. Just crack into it. I've already undone the uh, power supply. Yeah, just a, a nice little old PC. See if I can get in a little bit closer. Okay, so I suppose we can just get rid of the power supply. No use to me. wiring <laughs> but it seems to have everything this one um, it's obviously got a hard drive floppy on oh, no, that looks like a DVD a DVD and a floppy so a little bit of everything I'm not sure where I got this one from whether it was uh, just from street scrapping or uh, from a pickup. Hard to remember. Just a an old Ethernet card. But yeah, the the older PCs are pretty basic as far as scrapping them out. Um, yeah, they they made them. A lot simpler back in the day to to uh, work on, you know. These days they try and squeeze in things in um, really tight places. There we go. We've got uh, 228 megabyte RAMs. So. We just go for gold recovery there. And probably the only real interesting thing in this one will probably be just what CPU it is. Okay, so we've got a, um, a black fiber Celeron CPU. So quite a nice one. This one's actually in really nice looking condition from this side anyway there we go just a nice black fiber uh, good gold recovery in the black fiber probably uh, three times better than a uh, green fiber bit of extruded alloy and there's our motherboard so not a lot in uh, as I say with motherboards as far as gold recovery is concerned um, there's not a lot on a motherboard for gold recovery and if you if you've got the option to sell motherboards you're probably better off selling it but some people don't have that option so they just depopulate everything I mean we've got you know really nice BGA chip here and another one here so we do have on this board you know some good recovery uh, chips as well as you know your regular flat packs and ICs here 
a uh, couple of little tantalum capacitors. Uh, so yeah, it just depends. Everyone's a little bit different. Me, I'm a, just a little uh, choice picker. I'll probably take the three tantalums. Um, I'll leave these chips on because I'll sell this complete um, as, as just as a scrap motherboard. You know, I might take a few of these nice MLCs here. These are always going to be, you know, a good um, noble metal MLCCs. So that's it. And the rest is, uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. It's just uh, get the old hard drive out. So, yeah, that's all I've been doing today. Just scrapping out and trying to catch up with as many uh, things as I can. And... As some of you know, I've, I've got a lot of PCs and electronics, so I need to uh, scrap out, clear off, I'm trying to clear off as many as I can before I go on holidays. So we've just got a couple of DVD players, a little floppy. We can get an okay board out of there, it's just a mid grade board but I like to go for the gold pins. And just a nice old hard drive. It's, uh, yeah, it's just a 40 gigabyte hard drive. It's one of those uh, encased ones, so I just sell these as hard drives. Scrap, and that's it. Yeah, so there we go. We've got a few okay things. This is mostly for gold recovery. This is just to choice pick and get a few things and sell it as a motherboard. And um, always happy to get black fiber CPU. Um, yeah, really good, good for gold recovery. And uh, yeah, this one's actually a nice one, but uh, I've actually got brand new ones for my own collection. Um, over the years, I've managed to pick a few up brand new, still in packaging. All right. So that was that PC. Uh, next one. This one's got the uh, Pentium 3 in it. We'll just have a quick little look at that. And we'll go on to a few other things. Okay, let's have a look at this uh, Hewlett Packard Brio. Um, quite an unusual one, but it's just uh, very rusty and dirty. Not my kind of thing for my own collection, but just have a look inside. So it's running... Um, the Pentium 3 on Windows 98. Again, we've got a couple of uh, CD drives and a floppy. Not sure if there's a hard drive in there, but it's reasonably heavy. So, yeah, again, it might have been one that I just picked up off the uh, street and hard rubbish. Let's get it done. Interesting. I'll just cut out this power supply unit. So we can have a, a better look. Get one of these cables out. Alright. So yeah. Here we go. We've got the um, nice old Pentium 3. CPU, there is a hard drive in there which is good and uh, yeah, looks like a nice heavy uh, slot card as well. The screws are a little bit different here, they're uh, a Torx screw so I just need to change my drive over. Always keep a Torx screw which is the most common one. It's about, a, I think it's a T15 yeah, the T15, I usually just keep it on this extender ready to go because uh, I get a, you know, a lot of PCs, some of the small form factors from schools have all got these Torx. So it's just a...
but just to make it even more complicated, they do put a few uh, regular screws on there. Okay. So, here's our little hard drive. And, uh, geez, what's this one? This one's only a 10 gigabyte hard drive. It's uh, in beautiful condition for a 10 gigabyte hard drive. And, you know, when you get them like this, when they're in such good condition, uh, I've mentioned before, um, it's good to keep these ones with, because it's running Windows 98, you've most likely got all the software on there ready to go. And you might even have games and programs. Um, but, uh, yeah, so whenever you're rebuilding a, an older PC with Windows 98, you know, you keep these, so you, you know, it might have a damaged CD or um, might have a damaged hard drive or uh, the software might not be any good. So you can just, you know, pop one of these straight in and you can get up and running, you know. So, yeah. All right. Let's get into it. I'll get a bit closer. Okay. Might just have to... Take off this cover. Okay. So yeah, it looks like we we'll have to get on underneath here and undo a few of these screws. Yeah. Always hard when uh, they put two different screws. Two more CD drives. We'll get the boards out of the CD drives. Floppy drive. This one's got a, uh, it's a green brown board. So normally I don't take off the, these ones. Don't worry about opening them up. They're only a low grade board. So all I do is just break out the, uh, the gold pins and just keep that as gold pins. You can also, uh, depending on how far you want to go. When I've got them out and they're nice and easy, I just take out the little motor as in, out of there as well. Um, usually just pop straight out like that. So the rest of this can just go as scrap steel. And uh, this little motor, and you can see the brass rod. So I always, I don't sell the brass with the motor, I always cut it off, throw that in with brass, and now I've got this as a little motor. All right, well, let's just get some cable out. Okay. Slot card. Quite a heavy one this, because it's got all this junk on it, um, and the fingers are just okay there. It's the very shiny gold plating. When you see the really, really shiny, um, it's not as good gold as, say, the flat orangey gold. So in this case, all I'll do is just take off these two crystals and I'll leave this as a slot card. You get better value because of all this junk. It's too heavy. So better off selling it as a slot card. Scrap slot card.
Okay, nice empty tower. And here we go, we've got our nice motherboard. Just one RAM stick this time. What was it? 64 megabytes. And, uh, yeah, uh, a better value motherboard, simply because if you remember the last one, it only had two BGA chips, while well, this one's got three BGA chips. So it's getting closer to one of those motherboards that um, is worth depopulating, um, simply because of that. I can never get these um, Pentium 2 and 3 CPUs out. I've never actually tried to do it properly. So I usually just end up wedging it out like that. But there's our slot CPU, Pentium 3. And again, if you're going to sell this kind of thing, um, as scrap or whatever, you, you need to actually remove the heat sink and the plastic there. Okay, so that's all just extruded aluminium. You can uh, throw that in your bucket. You've got to take off this plastic. And there we have it nice Pentium 3 slot CPU they're not as good as the ones with the ceramic as you can see it's a BGA with a silicon top so there's very light value in here these are better than most you'll see especially like on motherboards and stuff um, but they're still not as good the best gold recovery here is those really nice gold fingers and uh, and obviously you've got all them little MLCCs which are you know going to have good palladium content and so on and just one single tantalum capacitor so yeah there you go and yeah that's it that's the uh, board and yeah as I said because it's got three BGA's um, some people will probably you know lean towards scrapping this board out completely um, <laughs> Because it's, it doesn't have a great deal of junk on it. Um, so yeah, it, it's just one of those boards. It really depends on what you do, whether you depopulate or whether you sell motherboards. If you just sell them, you know, just sell them like that. You know, you might want to pick a few things off, a couple of uh, MLCCs or the crystals, uh, maybe get away with one of your chips or something. It just depends on your buyer, okay? So I, I've got, you know, I've had people uh, bring me stuff where they've picked stuff off. I'm not that type of buyer that will buy your partially depopulated boards. When I buy boards, I expect them to be exactly how they should be. Um, you know, sure, if you, you know, took a, a crystal or two, I might, you know, uh, I'll, I'll let that go. But, you know, especially recently, I've had a few people bring me um, e-waste and they've picked a lot of the stuff off. And even on um, on hard drives, they've taken off all the MLCs and chips. And I only find that when I'm going through them later on, sorting them out. And uh, it's basically rip ripping me off. <laughs> um, so I'm getting a little bit more cautious when I'm buying e-waste. I'm starting to look a little bit closer. And if they're starting to, people are depopulating, especially motherboards where they're taking off the main BGA chips. I don't want them at all um, and if I do buy them I only buy them as mid-grade boards because it's no longer a motherboard once you've taken off the main chip okay so keep that in mind I've mentioned in my videos that you know depending on your buyer you can pick a few things but you have first got to work it out with your buyer don't pick and then go to a buyer and expect them to pay top dollar for um, boards that you've depopulated I'll just clean up a few things here now and just make way I've done oh, I've probably done about 10 PCs this morning so the next thing just to change things up a little bit 
Um, I mentioned to uh, someone on the floor on the, uh, in the comments section that I'll scrap out this Samsung uh, Blu-ray home theatre system that I picked up off the street on the weekend. It's, it's just a real big one and it, and it just looks um, interesting enough to uh, scrap it out and just see on video what we actually uh, get out of this one. Um, I've done, you know, DVD uh, or Blu-ray players before. You know, they're similar to DVD players and stuff. But this one, we'll just have a look anyway, just for fun. Okay. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> it's got a cover over a cover. Okay. Yeah, it's um quite interesting. We certainly got some. Uh, what have we got? One, two, three, four main circuit boards. Might even be one underneath the DVD. Uh, at least th this one's actually a, a nice high grade board. As you can see here, we've got the two BGA chips here. Um, you know, which uh, I'm most likely what I'll, I will do is I'll take off the three crystals and the two BGA chips um, and probably just leave the rest as a peripheral board. Uh, probably even take off these two memory chips down here. Or the other option is just to completely depopulate it, take off all the IC chips and the BJs, and there's uh, tiny little MLCCs. So you could even totally depopulate that. Um, otherwise, if you're going to sell it, it would go as a peripheral board um, or my high grade board. Interesting. Even in these, usually they got like. Yeah, in this case, yeah, there's a little crystal way in there, so usually I'll, I'll get that crystal out. But you could um, take off this, these steel covers, and almost sell this as just a, a low-grade board, very low-grade board. Okay, so yeah, for a Blu-ray player, it is reasonably packed with goodies in here so um, it's definitely something worth taking you know finding if you're uh, obviously if you're into reselling and stuff you know you might want to check to see if it's still working and all that you know I pick up these off the street and um, a lot of times they're they're faulty and they're just not worth my time trying to repair stuff like this you know I'd rather spend the time on higher value things like PCs with i5s, i7s and laptops and stuff like that, you know. Um, can't do everything, you know, because a lot of my time is spent going around picking stuff up. And so I don't have um, storage space. To be selling everything on eBay um, and it's just very time consuming to be packaging stuff for eBay um, you know for some scrappers that's fine if you've got n you know nothing else to do but I've got things to do every day I'm doing business pickups throughout the week and so I just don't have time to uh, sit at the post office and uh, packaging things up and wait, waiting in line for an hour to uh, send stuff away and then to deal with um, faulty items and stuff like that. But here we've just got a standard uh, power board here. It's quite heavy and, and it's quite packed. So if you sell power boards, you know, you'll get good value out of this. But we do have two copper spools here. So I'll definitely take off these copper spools and... Um, and even once you've taken off the copper spools, you can still sell this as a power board. You got less weight, but you you got the good weight, you know. 
because you've got the copper. Right, so these spools are really good. And um, the only thing with these, if you're, depends what you do with your copper. If you're just selling your copper, um, if I can get this out. Yeah, if you're just selling your copper as scrap, then um, these, no problem. But when, um, for me, I melt my copper into ingots, and you see the ends here, they're tin coated, they've got solder and tin over it. And so this contaminates your copper. So what I always do is I, I snip these ends off. If I see that they're tinned, the rest are okay, but usually all four ends have got a little bit of solder. And so, so it doesn't contaminate my copper. I'll just throw this into brass. That way it's the easiest thing and to do. And, and so I've got my nice copper spool. And see, so you get just from one spool quite a nice little chunk of copper here. You know, you can't ask for much more than that. <laughs> and so this copper would go kind of as burnt copper or, you know, number two copper because it's not bright and shiny. But when you melt it, that lacquer that's over the top, that just burns away. So you end up turning this into a pure copper. But still, you know, we don't melt copper and make ingots to sell at a scrapyard, obviously. That's only if you're into collecting it. So these ones are fine, and I'll also clean this off. So, in just two spools, you know, some pretty okay copper to add to your copper stack. Um, and it doesn't really do any uh, damage to the board. You can still sell this as a power board, you know. Or your other option, obviously, is to just depopulate more of the things, like take off your aluminium heat sinks, take off the uh, transformers, okay, and, um, you know, maybe a little IC chips and stuff. And then the rest, you could probably still might get away with very low-grade board, or you could just throw the rest into scrap steel, um, you know. But you could also take off the aluminium capacitors as irony aluminium because uh, they're not pure aluminium. And yeah, but you know. So as I've mentioned, the idea of these kind of videos is uh, just to have a little bit of fun and. Uh, um, while whilst I'm doing it anyway, I thought I'd put on video, but it's also to you know continue trying to um, educate people and you know because we're not all seasoned scrappers. There's a lot of people that are getting into scrapping for the first time, and and so in every video I try and put a bit of you know information just so just to um, that people can you know get little ideas. So here we got another. Just a, a low grade board, even though it's green on both sides. Um, it's not like really a, you know, some buyers you might get away with mid grade board, but in this case, it's got a very big aluminium heat sink, and this one's screwed on. Okay. So look at that, that's extruded aluminium, um, really good weight, really chunky, you can see the base there, it's just solid. And um, so this one, you know, I'll, I would sell as an aluminium heatsink, you know, or extruded aluminium. And then the rest, well, yeah, some buyers, you might be able to get away with being a, uh, uh, yeah, I suppose it is a mid-grade board now, because you've kind of got what looks like I see chips down here and bits and pieces so you could probably f get away with throwing this into mid-grade board and it's quite heavy board so you'd get good value out of that and and this one here obviously it's a 
it's a mid-grade or a peripheral board. Um, underneath this heat sink, it really depends on, okay, so that heat sink was extruded aluminium, but as you can see, we've got a really nice uh, BGA chip here, so uh, it's, it's getting closer to a high-grade board, for me anyway, and, and the same deal, I'd probably take off this chip, um, leave the rest on, and probably take off a couple of chips off the back, some MLCCs, and uh, the crystals, and still sell this as a mid-grade board. Um, but it depends on your buyer. If you're selling to me, you've got to be careful in what you're taking off, okay? Um, all right. Yeah, so that looks about it, and that was interesting. Um, I'll just take off this DVD. Oh, even more of a bonus. We've got a really nice mid-grade peripheral board here as well. So, extra bonus. So, as you can see, it's very nicely depopulated with flat packs, ICs. Even the other side, it's got all these little black tantalum capacitors. Um, so, you know, more extra value, some good IC chips, the memory chips. And um, so this board here, three crystals. It, this is, you know, really not worth to sell for me. I would depopulate this whole board and then just throw the actual board in with scrap metal because it's just got too many chips on it to make it worthwhile selling because it's, re you know, it's not that heavy. And you're not going to get much selling it as a mid-grade board, but if that's all you do, if you don't depopulate for precious metal recovery, then, then yeah, just sell it as a peripheral board, mid-grade board. And uh, the rest, I won't bother opening this up to get the little motor and a bit of brass out. I'm happy with that. So we've done that. So yeah, so there's our DVD board, or blueberry, uh, sorry, blueberry, what am I talking about? Um, Blu-ray, <laughs> Blu-ray board. A nice, kind of like a logic board. Well, it's not, this is just a, this one here is more the logic board. So uh, a very good one. These two are, are really good. We got our what we turned into a, a mid-grade board by removing the bit of junk off it. You know, it's still a bit junky, but we'll get away with being a mid-grade board. We've got a really nice piece of extruded aluminium. Extruded aluminium is very good prices at the moment here in Australia. Um, around a dollar fifty to a dollar seventy a kilo at the moment. And our power board that we got a bit of copper off. So that was actually really good um, for a Blu-ray. So this is why I like picking up anything electrical and if it looks like a DVD or a Blu-ray, because that's a really nice collection of boards. We got good gold recovery on three boards and um, we got value from a mid-grade, we've got good bit of aluminium and we've got a still got value from a power board and some copper so uh oh and obviously you know a little bit of wire and stuff like that but uh yeah um there you go all right now next i want to do a giant uh monitor so here i've got a giant uh nec lcd monitor so it's not really a tv it's it's a 55 inch monitor and it's the whole screen on the front is viewable so it's 55 inch viewable um, and yeah these are awesome um, I actually picked up about 12 of them uh, a couple of weeks ago from a business and uh, apparently they were all water damaged this one has got you know extensive screen damage and water damage um, 
but I did sell out of the 12 I did sell five of them and uh, he picked up three and two of them didn't really work one of them did work but the one that did work was actually a touch screen so um, even better and he's going to use them for his uh, his business um, for staff to um, you know he's into electronics as well but uh, he's also I've also got another two that he wants so here's one that I'm going to scrap out because it's uh, definitely damaged and um, yeah so let's just have a look it's a NEC multi-sync X 551 UN so 55 inch LCD monitor um, really cool it's a probably well it's definitely one of the biggest monitors I've ever got I did get a um, an 85 inch one once before it was a big Philips but it was already mostly scrapped out so um, so here's the first one that uh, of these large monitors that I'm actually scrapping out so let's have a quick look and see what's inside it shouldn't be much different than a, a regular LCD TV I suppose um, I've already undone a lot of screws because that's the most time-consuming part so that's the model there anyway uh, yeah uh, well there's definitely going to be a lot of steel um, and as you can see there's <laughs> so far there's not a lot but there's uh, two levels of this uh, steel base so we've got a very large power board here um, one of the biggest and qu quite a decent board here as well so I'll just um, try and work out how to get this open and yeah so in the uh, scrap steel alone there's quite a lot of uh, value here um, so it should be okay but at least the boards are, are quite large they're not overly popu pop uh, populated but uh, yeah at least we've got some sizable boards and it'll just be interesting to see what else is underneath so I'm just going to cut out these wires Because I need to clean the plugs off the wires anyway, when it comes to power boards, you're better off just cleaning them on the power board. That way you, the plugs can stay in and you get a little bit more value for them. Oh, there you go. Yeah, very large. It actually doesn't have a, a great deal on it as far as rubbish is concerned. I mean, nothing there, but see, this kind of board here, um, if you're, you know, scrapping for metals like aluminium, copper and stuff, you know, you've got all these extruded aluminium pieces here, and then we've got copper spools, we've got copper transformers, and you can see in these transformers here that really thick cable copper. So, you know, even these are worth busting open for the copper. So this kind of board here is more worth... Um, depopulating and getting you know your value because you know these extruded I'm getting like a dollar fifty a kilo for extruded you know and um, even just transformers we're getting you know something like sixty cents a kilo um, whereas the board itself might only be worth thirty five cents a kilo so in this case we're not going to be losing a great deal if we totally depopulate we're actually going to value add to this board by taking all the things off even if we just sell these as transformers and not get the copper out um, but yeah and quite a bit of aluminium so it just depends on how far people want to go as far as um, scrapping things out and and depopulating things I mean you know for some people that get a real lot uh, they might you know decide well it's they just don't have the time and they're better off spending that time going out and picking up more scrap and stuff like that but for other people it's uh you know i mean you're not if you're not picking up this kind of thing every single day then it's worth trying to maximize your value 
and and depopulate some boards like the one I just showed you. Um, everyone's different, so it's it's hard to you know tell say one way or the other, you know. Okay, so this board here, I've got to take off all these little things. Uh, no, all these little. Okay, sometimes these snap off quite easily, other times you've got to actually undo them. So I won't undo these just to get the board, because all we've got here is uh, scrap steel. But there's our board anyway, and uh, I can get around. So it, basically it's it's just you know your your standard mid grade board there might be a BGA chip underneath there I can see little memory BGAs you know so these ones might be worth plucking off um, a couple of crystals obviously you've got to always take off the battery but yeah pretty standard kind of mid grade board but it, at least it's a big one and it's got you know some weight to it obviously we've got to take off the steel but yeah, you know, it's going to have all this, all this stuff here attached to the board, so it's going to be decent weight. So we'll still get good value out of that board. And just really nothing, just a low grade board. Doesn't really have any IC chips, so it's pretty much a low grade. So these handles here, they're good for um, other things like, they're good for, uh, you know, when you, you, you might need in your workshop or something, you're doing a project, you want handles. So these are really good to keep, especially this type because it's cast aluminium. So it's always going to have value as cast aluminium, you know, but um, instead of just selling it as aluminium, you, you know, for some people it's worth keeping these in case you need handles you can always sell these as aluminium another time but I like to keep handles like this um, in case I build like a cabinet or something I want really good nice handles and because it's cast aluminium you know they're nice um, a decent weight but they're still a lot lighter than if they were uh, steel obviously So it's up to you, you can sell them as aluminium or keep them. So, a lot more steel. I just want to get underneath this and see if there's uh, much more. Okay. So that's a decent chunk of steel just there, nice clean steel. All right, so we've got the TCOM board over the back here, and looks like the the main uh, video kind of board. Because this one is like it is it's not really populated with really heavy transformers or stuff it's uh you know um you know i can see the little gold fuses and stuff so this one here we can get away with being a a mid-grade board okay so um if it had more transformers and stuff then yeah it would be a low grade board a power board but this one here we can actually get away with a mid-grade board because it's so clean of junk so that's great that's uh, good value as well just some low grade ribbon wire nothing under there and they're just uh, these ones are just a uh, uh, tin plated fingers so no precious metal recovery there But still, low-grade ribbon wire, 
It all adds up. There we go. Our uh, OK TCOM board. It's not the fanciest one I've seen. Considering that this television is worth about three and a half thousand dollars when brand new, um, you know, it's not, not that fancy of a TCOM board. Uh, we do have, you know, three little tantalum capacitors here, some uh, OK MLCCs, um, but the rest, you know, you. If you're selling this board as a uh, as a um, mid-grade peripheral board, you, you don't want to remove any of these chips because you would just you would totally uh, devalue it. So better off just picking off a couple of tantalums, some MLCCs if that's your thing, and or just sell it complete as a peripheral board. Some okay gold fingers on, on these uh, ribbon wires here. And no, the rest of the ribbon is not gold, it's just copper. It looks gold because it's yellow plastic. It's only the ends. There's no point in having gold running through the ribbon. Because gold is used as a contact point rather than anything else. Okay, so I'll just have a quick little look all right so it looks like I'm going to be able to get the finger strip boards out because uh, not much uh, damage is going to be done here just fold these out it's just the outside metal it's just riveted in all right Nice and easy. Break it up a bit. One side, okay. So, this is one com complete here, and yeah, it's um, about the lowest kind of grade ribbon uh, finger strip board that I've seen. It doesn't really you know the MLCCs on this are very very tiny and um, no, not even worth going for so you just got that you know gold fingers along there but they're a different finger it's a flashed finger it's not really plated so low value under these tape here you'll, you'll see some more flashing so you can see the, there's gold flashing under, under there um, the whole board would be probably gold flashed uh, or maybe not so low value and like I said not worth going for if you had to rip apart the TV to get it because um, uh, there's really not much weight because there's nothing else on them apart from the finger strips so uh, yeah but we still got them all right well that was uh, interesting uh, for a very expensive screen, obviously it's more about the the screen and what it is, what it does, or whatever. But we still got good scrap steel value. And see, here's the screen here, and um, I'm not sure if you can see the ends, but they're completely shattered and broken and water damaged. But a beautiful screen and. Uh, would have been a really nice imagine having this monitor as a computer monitor um, be insane 55 inches and as you can see there's it goes from edge to edge so it's all screen really beautiful but there we go we scored a decent you know a, a so so um, mid grade board we've got our giant power board that might be worth depopulating 
Got a little Tcon board that's a very average Tcon board for an LCD TV. We've got our finger strip boards. Can also go into like mid grade. And And we've got this board, we've still got to take off this scrap steel. So that's about the best board. Most important thing if you go sell mid-grade boards is always remove the battery and especially, you know, if you see them, as soon as you see them, get rid of them so you don't leave them on, forget them on. But um, I'd imagine that there would be, well, there'll be a BGA under here. What kind? Okay. So in this case, this BGA chip here, it's the one with the round copper top. So they're low value. So they're not worth taking off. I don't touch them at all. I leave them on to not devalue the board. I would rather have this little BGA chip here and these little memory BGAs and then um, even take some of the crystals off. But I'll sell that as a mid-grade board. So that's it. There you go, that was uh, from a very expensive LCD monitor and one of the biggest monitors you'll probably um, find out there if you ever get to find one. But yeah, what an what a amazing monitor. So it's very much no different to any other monitor or any other LCD TV, I should say. Pretty much the same components. Maybe it's got a little bit bigger boards, but uh, yeah interesting all right well that was a bit of fun um yeah i think i'm gonna scrap out a whole bunch of dvds for the rest of the day just want to get rid of them and uh start filling up the van for some scrap metal for uh to take away on friday so i'll do as many um i don't i've done probably 10 or 12 pcs now today so yeah all i want to do for the rest of the day is uh, sit back and have a bit of fun doing a whole bunch more DVD players get rid of them. I've got a, probably about a hundred of them. I've got to get through so Try and get through as many as them and get rid of some scrap metal before I go out street scrapping on the weekend. All right guys Well, hope that was a bit of fun for you. Keep scrapping and I'll catch you next time